Okay, so the, the common perception, I guess, still is that sustainability, implementing sustainability practices always costs money. Um, clearly, different people have different agendas around those kind of messages. And, and I know it's only in the UK there's a suggestion that if we end up at net zero, it's going to cost trillions of pounds. I've no idea you know, where anyone came up with that figure. But how much of that is a myth and how much is a reality in terms of you know, spending on sustainability? How much does it cost? You know, what are the benefits of stuff? So I'll start with that one. So whatever you do, there's going to be an investment required. It's about balancing that investment spending with any savings that you can make over and above the cost of your legacy IT. So we all know that IT has to be refreshed on a periodic basis. I mean, you think about your iPhone, you buy one of those every few years. But what we've seen over the last couple of years, we've had that radical shift driven by the COVID pandemic and the move to working from home instead of being office based. I mean, I'm at home today. Uh, I think Ragnar is there and it's a very luxurious office uh, and it's resulted in IT looking to support how people work now so working from home that's resulted in that faster cloud adoption and it's changed how IT delivers its applications and services to the end user so as IT looks to invest further in technology be upgrading existing infrastructure or moving to the cloud then you could think about the green or environmental objectives or the ESG, so the environment, social and corporate governance goals and how they can be factored into that decision making process. But also when you're talking about the cash and the money and saving all of that uh, against the investment, you know, as soon as you move to more efficient servers, as an example, there's that immediate benefit of OPEX savings, which will flow straight through to your bottom line. So it has a, a, a way of kind of working itself out in terms of not being that trillions of dollars or pounds that you talked about. And I can just underline that in our green IT reviews, we often find that there are clear synergies between reducing the climate impact on one hand and also reducing costs. That's what we often find. Okay, uh, but I think also as well, people, um, there's a, still perhaps an element of fear. I mean, you know, the COP26, people have different views as to successful or not. Uh, and then governments, you know, say they're going to do this and then maybe don't follow up with legislation. So a lot of companies are maybe a bit of a dilemma. I mean, I think you say that obviously invest the right kind of investment in IT can save you money and be sustainable. But companies are maybe still nervous that if they make a massive investment in something because they want to be sustainable. And then it turns out that they didn't need to do that, you know, because the rules haven't changed. Do you think people are still a, perhaps a little bit confused about you know, what they are required to do and what makes sense? Well, some of the early movers, they may not have seen the tangible financial benefits yet, some have, uh, but they will have seen other benefits such as employer branding and overall company brand. But I would say that the contents of the regulatory requirements, they're, they're quite clear and, and steady, and uh, although they may change sometimes in detail the timeline, uh, and the, the, um, the, the pace of the changes it moves fast now, so it, it, it's worthwhile to, to start acting quickly. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, we're in that world where, you know, the environmental ESG objectives are more of a priority. So you think about the EU, the European Union, they're helping to push that green agenda by asking for ESG data to be published uh, in their recent uh, non-financial reporting directive. You've also got the ECB, the European Central Bank, uh, asking banks and other financial institutions to integrate climate and environmental risks in their strategy. So the, the detail might change in, in the kind of uh, the rules and the regulations, but I think the general direction of travel has been set by the regulators in res and investors and customers are responding to that as well as Ragnar said. Yeah, so if we, if we said that the, the companies then are beginning to look and understand that there's a way of, of I guess, improving their IT, cutting their carbon and stuff. Um, the, the, the cloud, particularly the public cloud, I guess, is, is an obvious place where they're looking to, to make that kind of um, combined uh, benefit. Is that right? Yeah, completely, completely right. So if you think about the old fashioned data centers, you know, that we grew up with sort of 10, 20 years ago, uh, you know, they include the cost of lighting and cooling, which can have a substantial impact on your p &L, but also a cost to the environment. But then you've got organizations such as Microsoft with their Natic project, which I still can't believe they did this. They sunk a data center off the Orkneys. Uh, and so that 
kind of gives you clear evidence that IT are taking their green credentials and their carbon footprint that they generate seriously. And what Project Natic proved was that the, the concept of an underwater data center was feasible, even if not a little bit bizarre, uh, but the additional thing they found as part of this project they did was actually a lower failure rate of the servers within the uh, offshore, uh, underwater data center compared to those on land. Accelerating the move uh, to the cloud is a typical recommendation or finding in our green IT reviews, um, particularly if you, if you move to the right clouds, uh, as, as Sanjeev mentioned. Um, but I guess one, one thing there is, and, and Sanjeev referenced the fact that Microsoft, you know, with that project, are obviously they've got serious sort of plans and implementations around sort of sustainability green stuff, but, but outsourcing traditionally, you know, uh, you know, the UK, for example, we haven't got such a huge environmental footprint because we've outsourced loads of our manufacturing. So I guess the point I'm trying to make is it's easy to say, oh, I'm going in the cloud, that's environmentally friendly, but people do need to follow up and check that their cloud providers are, are doing the right things as well, yes? It does depend on where the, the uh, cloud services are based, definitely. And when uh, moving to cloud services, uh, in particular public sector, we'll also need to consider other regulatory requirements to, to move uh, uh, operations overseas. I, I take a, quite a simple approach to this. It's the three golden rules of property, location, location, and location. You know, so Project Natic showed that if you locate a data center in a cool or in a cold environment, the cooling costs are obviously going to be lower than a warm, uh, warmer climate. But then the cloud providers, so AWS are looking to use renewable energy by 2025. Microsoft are looking to go carbon negative by the end of the decade, 2030. So they're kind of taking on some of this ownership in terms of that green technology. But even without those commitments, you know, it's in the interest of these cloud providers to be as efficient as possible because, you know, a lower, more managed energy cons consumption helps their bottom line at the end of the day. Okay, so I guess um, the discussion so far, we, we perhaps the conclusion to draw is that people need a way of understanding the, you know, the potential impact of any decisions they make around investing in IT infrastructure, both you know, in terms of hopefully cost savings and also the, the sort of environmental angle. Um, so I guess, are such things available or how do, how do they sort of you know, manage that sort of uh, potential hazard? Yeah, I, I guess part of the problem is there's so much data and so much information out there, which can cause confusion. Uh, so it can result in, you know, business leaders and IT leaders as well, feeling just completely overwhelmed and just not knowing where to start. So if I take the analogy of buying a car, which, uh, you know, we've all done sometimes. So when you buy a car, you know, you tend to look at the fuel efficiency of a car these days and how much those running costs are. But then you, you layer on the tax. So as we all know here in the UK, you know, you pay more tax based on the level of CO2 emissions that your car emits. So when you start to buy that car, you can start to build the total cost of running that car or the total ownership of running that car. So look at the fuel, the tax, the insurance, the servicing and whatever else, uh, you know, that comes to uh, cost for running a car. So then you as an individual, you've got a clear line of sight of how much it costs to run that car. And that can influence the decision and on what car you choose or choose not to buy. So it's all about having that data and understanding it and looking at how it, what the total picture is. And mm -hmm. um, we've talked a little bit about electricity and energy consumption, which of course work for cooling and running server parts. The, the, uh, there are quite uh, big savings also for uh, uh, using your laptops and mobile phone, phones a longer period of time. And also, if you look at commuting for, for uh, personnel and, and for that matter, consultants if in, in working from home versus in the office. So, so there are quite a few other areas except uh, electricity. Okay, so um, I guess it, the, the idea of some kind of IT financial management tool that, that can you can put in all these variables and then hopefully it gives you a, a, a decent, is that, is that the future for, for people making these kind of decisions? Yes, if you introduce, um, the bottom line approach, at least the two piece for people, uh, no, no, planet and profit, and then uh, you can add people as well, of course, and you can add that into your portfolio management process, which is uh, common for IT departments to use when prioritizing different initiatives and projects. If you add to the profit, which is typically considered the, the cost savings and, and the benefits, also the, the climate impact uh, um, opportunities of a project, then, then you could come up with, with a different, perhaps, uh, decision profile for, for a given initiative. 
yeah, and uh, just using my simple car analogy, uh, you know, you might be able to sort of buy the car, but can you afford to run it once you've taken account of all those costs? So knowing how much IT costs to run from a financial and environmental perspective, then just makes it easy for IT leaders and business leaders to make an evidence and informed decision. And um, uh, how granular are these tools? I mean, to what level of, you know, I don't, you know how far can you drill down in terms of understanding the cost? And as, as you've alluded to, I think we've got OPEX and, and CAPEX, which are, you know, might, it might seem attractive, the initial investment, but then the ongoing running cost. So how easy, I guess, is it to come up with that comprehensive, detailed um, analysis of a potential investment, you know, in, in some infrastructure? upgrade um, so we can go as detailed as granular like so if i think about the service where financial solution i can pull in all my data and i can do all those kind of things that I, I need to do in terms of data transformations and understanding what parts of my estate are costing me more due to uh, energy and efficiencies and so i could put an energy inefficiency tax if you like on those certain items so i can get a, a good view of how much my hardware costs or how much it would cost me say to move to the cloud i can do those scenario plans as well uh, but you've got to be honest you know when you potentially buy some of these uh, more updated pieces of kit there may be a slightly higher purchase price of that hardware but you know, with recent events, with energy prices going through the roof, as we all know from our own personal uh, personal lives, uh, you know, a more energy efficient technology or moving to renewables can help mitigate some of that upward pressure. Uh, and I'm showing my age again here now. So I remember the TV presenter Jonathan Ross at Live Eight saying, "If you can't be green, be mean." So you can be green and save money. They both go hand in hand. And using uh, an IT financial management tool, service where to, to uh, support your green IT review, then you will capture all the data in one place and it's also structured according to uh, your IT services uh, structure, which most companies have. And, and uh, the larger the company, the higher the benefit. And also if you want to continue working with uh, your information, uh, which most companies should want to do, uh, then that benefit is uh, increasing too. Okay, so so it, it genuinely is possible to, I guess, save costs, improve your IT performance, and reduce your your know, carbon footprint. Is is that is that pretty much? I won't say easy, but that is achievable for <laughs> for most investments that people might make in IT. Yes, and uh, not only in IT actually. If you can, you can uh, also as you normally do for for a, a project that IT will enable or support in the business. You could not only look at the benefits and costs for, for the business and the IT investment, uh, you could also look at the, the climate impact or, or the climate opportunities of, of that project. Uh, and uh, uh, we typically do uh, green IT reviews uh, for business as usual, the services, but also look at certain key projects in, in as part of our recommendations. Yeah, uh, just to echo what Ragnar said, you know, the service where financial uh, solution, we can help you build those business cases to understand, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, what investments you could make, what investments you should make, and the returns on those investments, not just on a PL basis, but, you know, the people and the profit side, which uh, Ragnar talked about as well, which would be part of a business case these days. Okay, and um, it'd be good to understand, we, we've talked about, I won't say the theoretical, but I, I you know, in terms of pra what practical things, it, there's a partnership between yourself, Centigo, Centigo, and Serviceware. It'd be great to understand sort of what that is, how it came about, and, and you know, aims and objectives. Uh, I'll let you go, Ragnar, first, if you like. Oh, oh yes. Uh, no, we we, uh, we have run green IT reviews and work with IT financial management, and we found uh, that using an IT financial management tool in Serviceware simplifies uh, the process and it structures the data and the structure of the cap capturing of information and also that the, the client or customer can, can make use not only of the cost uh, data, but also of the climate efficiency data. So, so that's how we, uh, uh, we, we have uh, developed this. Yeah, uh, and just kind of echoing what Ragnar said, so I think, you know, Centigo and Serviceware, we're positioned in a, a kind of a unique position to 
offer a service that enables you know large organizations or even small organizations to take control of one their IT services but not just taking control of their IT service but looking at the carbon footprint and the costs associated with that and to help them meet their sustainability goals quicker and maximize those digital investments which are hopefully a lot more efficient in terms of uh, energy energy usage okay I, mean, I, I don't I know sometimes it can be difficult with client confidentiality but are there one or two examples you, you might be able to share as to how you've you know actually gone out there help customers um, address some of these issues I can I can go first then so so a couple of green IT reviews that I mentioned a large charity organization uh, aid organization the Red Cross in, in Sweden we helped with this and also one of the larger uh, universities uh, to, to go through their um, IT foot the, the footprint of IT and also looking a little bit into to what IT could do for the rest of the organization uh, and the benefits for the organization and also for the CIO CTO was to, to take initiative, take a lead and get the organization started on, on a journey uh, to, to uh, first establish where they are and also identify uh, the improvements to make. Nothing for me to add to that. Uh, Ragnar's at the cold face. Well, that's fine. I mean, we've covered a, a fair amount of ground. Um, uh, any sort of final thoughts as to, I guess for people, I mean, most people, most organizations are aware of, of sustainability sort of rising up the corporate agenda. They're also, we're always told every year the IT department has less money and is required to do more with it. <laughs> um, so any advice for companies either sort of, and dare I say the pandemic's obviously refocused people. So with all that going on, are there only one or two bits of advice to someone who's you know trying to wrestle with, with sustainability, budgets, IT infrastructure. Yeah. Um, first, I just want to say, look, thanks for your time. It's, it's been actually quite an uh, quite an interesting chat this morning. Uh, and as you've said, you know, ESG, the environment are higher priorities now. You know, for all organisations, as I said, regards to their sites. You know, you've got governments, agencies, investors, customers, all want to respond to the climate emergency. I mean, you think about some of the demonstrations and the protests all at COP26 in Glasgow at the end of last year. You know, it's a lot more front of center uh, of mind for a lot of people. And I think IT can't stand still and avoid that conversation now because you know we've seen Project Natic, the Microsoft sinking of the data center. Uh, and so IT is responding. But IT's kind of helped a lot of business continue their operations during the pandemic, you know, and that was pretty impressive how they reacted and the speed at which they reacted and be able to migrate to the cloud amongst other things. But now I think IT leaders have got to take a step back and say, actually, we've shown what we can do in a short space of time when the pressure's on us. We've now got to start to look at delivering those green and sustainable technologies. And that, that is something that, you know, Centigo and Serviceware can help deliver in terms of going in there, assessing and understanding where they're spending money, how they're spending their money in terms of the infrastructure and looking at what the opportunities are to reduce costs of energy consumption. Uh, but it, I guess it's just doing it the first time. It's just difficult. It's hard. But, you know, between Serviceware and Centigo, I think we've got the solution to help. And add to what Sanjeev said, uh, if you look at IT and the impact on the climate of IT, it's increased because you use IT services more. There's more IT in products and services uh, and the whole industry ha has, has grown. And on the other side, what IT can enable and support in the whole business, in the whole organization and the operations and the whole ecosystem, that's where the real benefits are. Uh, so uh, a CIO, CTO can start by looking at uh, its own department impact and capture that and cost, of course, and then uh, reduce climate impact and typically costs, and then uh, be a good role model within the organization and start looking at what is the impact of what IT really enables and supports in the business and the whole value chain? That's where, where the, the real benefits are. And, and maybe just finally, finally, would it be sensible for folks to start with a, a relatively small, sort of easy-ish to understand project? And once they're comfortable with that, you know, how it works, to start rolling it out, you know, as you say, maybe across the whole IT department and then even, you know, wider within the organization or or can you go right we're going to do it and start from day one you know at the highest level and, and trickle it down how does it work 
Mm. Now we could also start uh, hypothesis driven. So we have a, an hypothesis that these areas could be uh, valuable to, to uh, look into more. Uh, and that can be a project. It doesn't necessarily need to be a business as usual. Uh, and, and the service where Incentigo software can be used for both. But I think the end goal and the end game will be to, to capture the, the costs uh, and the climate impact in one place and then work on it on a continual basis. Yeah, I, I would concur. I kind of have it as a land and expand project approach and then build from there. Okay, well, it's been lovely to chat. Um, some great insights from both you, so Sanjeev and, and Ragnar. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure.